ahead and talk about the main thing that I wanted to talk about this evening, which has to do with um, the adult entertainment industry attorney, Mark Randazza of Randazza Legal Group, and a legal statement that he made in regards to his relationship with and his history of affiliating with a long time adult entertainment industry staple figure known as Ari Bass, AKA Michael Whiteacre. So just give me a moment while I bring up the main news story revolving around this situation. And then I just want to review a bit of the history between Randazza and Bass because Randazza seems to be trying to disassociate himself from Ari Bass, but mm -mm -mm, they have a long history of getting into all kinds of shenanigans together. Yes, they do. This article is from um, profootballtalk.nbcsports.com. Here's the title, and it was posted September 2nd, 2020. Daniel Snyder pursues a new angle in his defamation case. And just so you all know, um, when it comes to Snyder's case, my opinion really is indifferent, but I just think it's very important that the truth does come out in regards to uh, Mark Randazzo's statement, because it does appear that he just may have committed perjury. And it wasn't very long ago that he was disciplined in several states due to his unethical behavior relating to taking bribes. But <laughs> that ran Daza, that ran Daza. Mm -hmm. Washington owner Daniel Snyder continues to pursue evidence in connection with his pending defamation claim in India. Although his latest efforts seeks information regarding someone other than former Washington employee Mary Ellen Blair. The latest effort potentially adds more breadcrumbs to a trail that possibly leads back to Washington minority owner Dwight Shar. On Wednesday, Snyder filed in a California federal court a document aimed at obtaining information that potentially would link the defamatory articles and the broader alleged effort to smear Snyder back to Shar in a way that is separate and apart from ongoing efforts in a Virginia federal court to obtain information ultimately linking Shar through Comstock Holding Company to Blair. In the California action, Snyder seeks from New Content Media Incorporated information regarding its relationship with a company known as Honey House, which allegedly has a link to Mia.com, the website that published multiple false articles tying Snyder to Jeffrey Epstein. Ooh, and just so that you all know, Honey House, aka Honey House PR, is... Ari Bass, a.k.a. Michael Whiteacre. Snyder's lawyers explain in the filing that Honey House and Mia are, quote, active in the online pornography world. Active is an understatement. <laughs> Ari Bass basically is the pornography world. He has been around forever and a day and probably will never die. Specifically, in its ability to have its clients get their names slash services promoted on MIA for pay. Snyder's lawyers also explain in the filing that Honey House, quote, solicits clients on social media by promoting, among others, the services of MIA, which is a clear indication that Honey House touts its ability to have MIA place stories on behalf of its clients for pay. Ari Bass, according to the filing, runs Honey House. Yes, he does. Absolutely, he does. A lawyer named Mark Randazza, this thing keeps bouncing around. Does it want me to read it? 
A lawyer named Mark Randazza, according to the filing, has a well-documented history and extensive ties with Bass. Absolutely he does. Absolutely he does. And I can prove it. The filing lists several connections between the two men that resulted in litigations and allegations of stalking, intimidation, and harassment. Yes, yes. That's where the document ends as it relates to the potential breadcrumbs leading back to Shar. However, a source with knowledge of the situation tells PFT that Randaza has represented Shar in court. Hmm. PFT has obtained a document filed earlier this year in Florida by Randaza on behalf of Shar. Coincidentally, in an action aimed at securing discovery in a defamation case. Thus, if or when information obtained in the California action shows a connection between new content media to Honey House to Randazza, the next step could be to explore a connection between Randazza and Char, with the apparent goal ultimately being able to prove, if possible, that Char initiated the process that resulted in the defamatory articles being published on Mia.com. Update 9-3-2020. Randazza has filed an emergency motion to intervene in the case and to strike any references to him. I don't think that's going to work out. He says he has no connection to Mia.com and only limited knowledge of Ari Bass. Define limited. Limited as in... You don't have 100 years worth of knowledge, but you do have, what, maybe 10 years worth of knowledge? Is that what you mean by limited? <laughs> now we are going to read the, um, we're going to go in, over into the uh, docket, and I'm going to read through that. But I mean, first and foremost, anyone with access to Google could easily see that Randazza and Ari Bass both are a part or at least were intricately involved with the Free Speech Coalition, which is the political face of the adult entertainment industry. Both of those men have... Um, been intricately involved with the adult entertainment industries for such a long time. And uh, it's just so ironic that both of them are claiming that I am a stalker, especially considering Ari Bass's um, documentary of anti-porn activist who is now dead. She died in the midst of his documentary, Shelley Lubin. But we'll get to that. I'm going to read the Declaration of Ari Bass. This was written September 2nd, 2020. I, Ari Bass, declare I am over 18 years of age and have never been convicted of a crime involving fraud or dishonesty. Wasn't he charged with domestic violence against Christina Pereira? I'm pretty sure that he was. Wasn't that a crime? Isn't it a crime to assault your wife? <laughs> I have firsthand knowledge of the facts set forth here, herein, and if called as a witness, could and would testify competently thereto. I have met Mr. Randazza only three times. Well, that's a lie right there. Because to find meat, is this as an in-person because he most definitely has met with Randazza on multiple occasions online. And meeting online nowadays is akin to meeting in person. So, once at the Circle Bar inside the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino during an AVN show in Las Vegas, I had gone over to say hello to a friend of mine and Mr. Randazza happened to be standing there as well. I am not sure what year it was, but it was some time ago. Anyone looking into Ari Bass's history, it's very important that you know that alias, Michael Whiteacre. 
He tries to distance himself from that, and I don't know why, because he's actually a brilliant writer. But he hmm, just has some issues. I think he could benefit from some therapy. Maybe a lobotomy, who knows. All right. Another time I bumped into him alongside the red carpet of the Exhibit show in Los Angeles. I believe that was around 2015. Oh, so he did remember that. Okay, okay. The last time I ran into Mr. Randazza, I was covering a hearing in Las Vegas that he was participating in, and I asked him for a comment outside the courtroom. He declined to give me a comment. Hmm. The longest, well, you know, I wonder why Ari Bass didn't mention that Randazza initially tried to enter him into his fraudulent lawsuit against me as a witness. Why didn't Ari Bass remember that in this statement? Did he not remember? Or did he choose to exclude that? In fact, let me go ahead and just bring up that information right now. Okay, so basically what happened was that Michael Whitaker, a.k.a. Ari Bass, was set to be a witness for Randazza and his wife, who he was using fraudulently as a shield to manufacture a fraudulent lawsuit against me. But he wasn't able to. All right, so let's continue. So he, he didn't mention that he was going to be a witness in a Randazza case pertaining to Randazza and his ex-wife. And I do want to make it clear that Randazza's ex-wife filed for divorce <laughs> in the midst of the fraudulent lawsuit against me. Yeah. Yeah. That marriage didn't work out. I wasn't wrong about the things I was saying. The longest conversation we have had was today, September 2nd, 2020, when Mr. Randazza emailed me the petition and asked me to call his office. I called his office. We reviewed petitioner's supplemental mental ex parte petition and mocked it together as a ridiculous screed on the same logical level as a crazy wall on Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Mr. Randazza has never worked for me, nor with me, nor vice versa. Complete lie. Complete lie. They have worked together when it came to creating a legal, a potential legal situation for Diana Graham Mason, a.k.a. Desi Fox, and they worked together when it came to the fraudulent lawsuit against me. Yes, they absolutely did. The only thing we really have in common is that we share a stalker, Alexandra Mayers, a.k.a. Monica Foster. And here's something else interesting. I have never met Mark Randazza face-to-face, -face, nor have I ever met his ex-wife who was utilizing that lawsuit against me face-to-face. -face. Nope. I have met Ari Bass face-to-face -face when he was creating his stockumentary about Shelley Lubin, the anti-porn activist who is now deceased. And he did not tell me the truth about what that documentary was going to be about. I did mention Randazza Records in a tweet one time. I did that to mock Alexandra Mayer's paranoid delusions. Paranoid delusions, really. I don't have paranoid delusions. And are you a licensed psychologist or psychiatrist, Ari Bass, to even say this about me? See, this is, this is the kind of thing that's getting you in trouble. This is what you and I are going to be dealing with a court case in regards to, because I do not have paranoid delusions. And you have absolutely no right to tarnish my name or reputation stating so in a legal brief that's public about me, you just defamed me. I never expected that anyone of ordinary intelligence would think that this was, that this meant that there was such a thing. Why wouldn't I think that that was such a thing? 
on, you were bullying me online for years, Ari Bass, a.k.a. Michael Whiteacre, for years, and it is documented. But you see, you got to try to discredit it now because you're trying to move on in life, but now your past is coming to haunt you, isn't it? My only connection to Mia is that my public relations company sends out press releases to hundreds of places, including Mia. Apparently, Mia picked up one of my releases last year or found the story on another website and created their own version. I have never had any conversation or correspondence with anyone at Mia. Well, you know what? You might not have. I don't really know what's going on with Mia, but what I do know is what's going on with me. And I know that for you to say that I have paranoid delusions, that's a problem, Ari Bass. But let's continue now. I hope you both had a lot of fun laughing at me over the years, Ari Bass and Mark Randazza. I really hope you did. Because knowing and dealing with both of you has been quite the education. An education which I'm grateful for when it comes to the negativity in this world, the darkness in the world, and the downright evil in this world. You two men, you two white privilege enabled men, <laughs> who love to try to um, tell African Americans how to think and how to act. You too definitely made me a far better person than I normally would have been. And for that, I'm very thankful. Oh, I do want to add that both Ari Bass and Michael Whitaker um, had a friendship, a close relationship actually with a porn star who is currently incarcerated known as Mercedes Carrera. She went to prison on charges of child abuse along with her husband. There's quite a few photos actually of Randazza with Mercedes Carrera. There's a selfie that Mercedes Carrera took in what appeared to be Randazza's bathroom in her underwear. Mercedes Carrera's husband referred to Randazza as his Eskimo brother. Google what Eskimo brother means and you'll see what I'm talking about. But yeah, so we have, we've already established that Ari Bass left out a very important in interaction he had with Randazza when it came to him, tr him trying to be a witness in his case, meaning Randazza's case against me, okay? All right, so this was dated September 3rd, 2020. And I'm just going to read through it. I am over 18 of 18 years of age and have never been convicted of a crime involving fraud or dishonesty. No, he hasn't been convicted of a crime, but he has been disciplined by several state bars in regards to his unethical activity, taking bribes from adult entertainment companies, quite a bit, quite a bit. Google it. I have firsthand knowledge of the facts set forth herein and if called as a witness could and would testify competently thereto. <laughs> I don't think that he can testify competently because I don't think he knows the truth from lies. Not at all, but that's just my opinion. I am the managing partner of Randazza Legal Group, PLLC, and I am an attorney licensed to practice in the states of Massachusetts, Florida, California, Nevada, and Arizona. I wonder why he didn't mention that he was disciplined recently, though. Mm -hmm. I have reviewed petitioner's supplemental ex parte petition for assistance in aid of a foreign proceeding pursuant to 28 U.S.C. 1782 to serve additional documents, request, and deposition topics identified in exhibits T and U hereto filed as DKT number 13. Petitioner's supplemental ex parte petition contains a number of false and misleading statements about me, which I must correct. <laughs> or that you must tell more lies to cover up the truth of, right? Mm -hmm. The supplemental ex parte petition makes a number of dishonest and defamatory claims, including the facts that I have worked extensively with Ari Bass. You have! But then again, it's all about perspective. For you, Randazza, extensively might equate to 100 years. 
For other people, it might equate to 10 years. So you weren't very specific, not at all. That Mr. Bass and I have a well-documented history together. Well, there is a well-documented history. Not just me, Desi Fox, Crystal Cox, quite a few people have documented the history of you two working together, Randazza. Oh, Michael Struther, that's another one. That Mr. Bass and I, quote, have a well-documented history together, much of which has led to this litigation. That Mr. Bass and I, quote, launched a music production label named Randazza Records, which was alleged to have breached copyright legislation and stolen audio track of a musical piece from an individual named Alexandra Mayers. Well, you did. You did, or at least Ari Bass did. He downloaded, without my permission, a musical piece which I wrote and produced independently and re-uploaded it to a platform without my permission. Yes, he did. And I believe he did it under the guise of Randazza Records, so I will have to look to make sure, but I'm pretty sure he did. So maybe you didn't go through with creating Randazza Records, but it seems like you were on the, on the path to doing so, utilizing my stolen artistic work. And for those of you who are curious, um, you can always check out my other music on alexandramayersmusic.com. Don't steal it. That Mr. Bass and I launched a music production label named Randazza Records, which was alleged to have breached copyright legislation and stole an audio track of a musical piece from an individual named Alexandra Mayers, me. And that Mr. Bass and I stalked, intimidated, and harassed Alexandra Mayers. Yes, you absolutely did. And you're still doing it today, aren't you? By writing about me and lying about facts in this particular legal brief. Let me, let me see. Oh, and look at who, look at who is the attorney at the top of this particular legal brief with Randazza's testimony, a man known as Alex J. Shepard. Alex J. Shepard was the exact same attorney that I dealt with during the Randazza lawsuit, which was a fraudulent lawsuit filed against me. It was Alex J. Shepard who always showed up to court alongside Ronald Green. So Alex J. Shepard knows that I am not mentally ill, knows that I am not delusional, knows the truth of the relationship between Ari Bass and his boss, Mark Randazza. Let me continue. These claims are false. Well, no, they're not false. Actually, let me read to you something that um, Mark Randazza said directly to me when he first, I guess, for whatever reason, fixated on me. I originally posted, and this was on the XBiz forum. This won't be a popular reply here, but I'll just say this. He was out of control gross and in civilization, you just can't have that. And this is in regards to a certain pornographer. And in response, Mark Randazza wrote, no, it won't be popular. The reason being that it is an uneducated and moronic reply. So he's calling me uneducated and a moron. And this was at the very beginning of when I first was dealing with him for whatever reason. So he goes on and on, but the last sentence that he wrote was, now take your uneducated ass and drive your 1993 Geo off a cliff, please. I drove a Geo tracker at the time, never disclosed that online, but Randazza researched me to find out what kind of car I drove. And he suggested I drive off a cliff. Yeah, that's not intimidation, really? <laughs> These claims are false and their inclusion in the supplemental ex parte petition are misleading to the court. No, they're not. They're true. They're true. Further, even a moron in a hurry. See, he's using that word moron again. Whenever he doesn't get his way, he calls the person a moron because he's a narcissist who thinks he knows everything and is the smartest man in the world. 
Furthermore, even a moron in a hurry could not have made these errors innocently. I am firmly of the opinion that the attorneys who signed this document had to have knowingly misled the court and have attempted perhaps at their client's behest to circumvent the defamation laws by engaging in defamation under the shield of the litigation privilege. So he is the victim of being defamed, even though he's defaming me. But I guess he feels like he can get away with it because I'm a black woman who used to work in the adult entertainment industry over 10 years ago at this point, and who isn't the most popular girl in school due to being a Donald Trump supporter and a black Republican. Yeah. Yeah. First, I have not worked extensively with Mr. Bass. Yes, you have. I have met Mr. Bass a total of three times. Lie, because you're not counting your online interactions, which are meetings. Once briefly at an adult industry convention in Las Vegas, another time briefly at another such convention in Los Angeles, and once when he asked me for comment on a hearing he was observing in Las Vegas. I declined to comment. But again, see, look at this. Randaza is not mentioning that Ari Bass was going to be brought in as a witness in the fraudulent case he filed against me, but then was taken off the witness list. The only other time I can recall ever speaking to Mr. Bass was on September 2nd, 2020, when I reached out to him via an email address I found for his public relations company and asked him to call to discuss this matter. So why doesn't he talk about all the multitudes of tweets between him and Ari Bass over the years? when Ari Bass was using the um, Twitter handle, Mr. Whiteacre. I'm gonna post them all. Not all the tweets, but I have quite a few of them. I believe that this was the most extensive conversation I have ever had with him. We spent most of the call mocking the lawyers who relied upon the patently unreliable Crystal Cox, another woman who he mercilessly bullied, and Alexandra Mayers as their sources of information. Why am I an unreliable source of information? My blogs, my websites have been featured by Variety Magazine, The Daily Mail, The LA Times. Yeah. But I'm a woman, a black woman. And Randazza doesn't like women very much. Not a certain kind of woman, at least. I have never worked for or with Mr. Bass. Lie. And he has never worked for or with me. Lie. We have never collaborated on anything together. Lie, lie, lie. They collaborated on their use of the courts to intimidate, stalk, and harass, and defame, and just almost pushed me to suicide in 2014 to 2017. They worked together to do nearly the same to Desi Fox, AKA Diana Graham Mason. And only God knows who else they've worked together to stalk and bully and harass and just exercise their criminal white privilege upon despicable human beings, if you want to call them human beings. We know of each other and are cordial when we have bumped into each other at conferences. We most certainly drink one cocktail together, perhaps in or around 2012 or 2013 at the Circle Bar in the Hard Rock Hotel during the AVN conference. That is the extent of our conspiratorial actions together. Lie. I am aware that Mr. Bass published a tweet that mentioned Randazza Records. This tweet was not serious and we were merely mocking Alexandra Mayers, a stalker against whom my then wife secured a defamation judgment. You know what? I'll bet you part of the reason she divorced his ass had to do with... I, I bet you... I don't know. I don't know, but if I had to theorize it, 
it had to deal with the fact that he was basically playing a game with kicking in word with me. Because you, you see what he wrote here? They were mocking me. Then they drug me through the courts, basically a lynching, a legal lynching. I had to represent myself in that case because I didn't have any money to hire an attorney. And they were just laughing it up. But here we are today, aren't we? Any person who, re who read it should be able to tell it was not serious. Hmm. I think it was serious. I think it was serious as a heart attack. There is no such thing as Randazza Records. Well, that's because you're not cut out to put together a music company. Not cut out to be an attorney either, really. The extent of my musical career and endeavors is that in about 1991, I was a member of a band called F Fromunda whose name was derived from a vulgar, humorous expression. The band was about as good as its name. Mr. Bass and I have never had any business relationship, personal relationship, lie, nor any other relationship whatsoever, lie, aside from what is described in this declaration, lie. Aside from discussing this petition via telephone after I emailed him a couple of the supplemental ex parte petition, we have hardly ever spoken. Tweets say otherwise. Perhaps the only thing that Mr. Bass and I have in common is a stalker, Alexandra Mayers, a.k.a. Monica Foster. And again, I'm not a stalker. I have absolutely zero criminal history. I don't even have a DUI. I am not a stalker. I am an independent investigative blogger who investigates people who are public figures who aren't used to exactly being scrutinized or put under the microscope, who traditional journalists who work for large media companies are told not to investigate because the people I investigate are linked to organized crime funded by big money wealthy jerks. I go the distance and I walk a path that few dare to walk because it's scary as hell. Look at this, for example. But I'm not a stalker. You wanna call me a stalker? Then you get criminal charges pressed against me for stalking, which you can't do because I'm not a stalker. The sources that the petition purports to rely upon are Crystal Cox and Alexandra Mayers. Cox is an extortionist. I have written extensively about that fact, and even someone with the most rudimentary investigative skills or curiosity would have been able to find that fact. Cox initially tried to extort me to the tune of $5,000 per month. When I refused to pay her, she registered a domain name that corresponded to my then wife's name and posted insulting information on that website. When that did not have desired effect, Cox then registered a domain that corresponded to my then three-year-old daughter's name. I then sued her. Early on in the suit, I obtained a preliminary injunction which gave control of many domains Miss Cox was using for her extortion scheme to me. I wrote about this when it happened. Alexandra Mayers did not seek payment from me. But I believe the appropriate term for her is bat guano crazy. Here's what's interesting. He did not mention that upon my obtaining one of the domains which he sought from Crystal Cox, I gave it to him. Never charged him, didn't ask for anything. He actually initially offered me $100 for that domain. And you know what I told that man? I told that man to take that $100 and take his wife out for dinner because he didn't deserve her in the first place, which is evident to this day, considering that they are divorced. Yeah. But what did I get for being nice? 
a fraudulent lawsuit filed against me. And now here we are today with him labeling me crazy. Now, just as I said, when it comes to Ari Bass, Mark Grandaza is not a psychologist. He is not a psychiatrist. I am not crazy. He has no platform to stand upon to diagnose me. So this is something that I'm going to talk to an attorney about. Because whether I'm not seeking anything monetarily, what I'm seeking is for it to be known on legal record that this man is harassing me and defaming me and stalking me using the legal system to this day in the year 2020, six years after my initial encounter with him. I guess he didn't think I was going to find out about this. Please. I sued her for defamation. Yeah, fraudulently. You created a situation to where I thought I was helping a woman get away from organized crime. And once again, there it is. Me trying to help somebody and it shooting me right back in the face. She too, well, I'm sorry, I sued her for defamation on behalf of my then wife and we got a judgment against her. A judgment you can't collect on. She too is so obviously unreliable that nobody who is even trying to be honest would prefer her as a source to the court. No, plenty of people actually would. But not you, because you are not honest. You, Randaza, at least from my perspective, shouldn't even have a legal license. I'll tell you what you would be good at, though. You would be very good at being a porn agent or a pimp. I don't know. Maybe when Mercedes Carrera gets out of jail, you two can go into business together doing just that because that's where you belong. As to the substance of petitioner supplemental ex parte petition, I have had no contact with either New Contact, New Content Media Incorporated or MIA. In fact, I had never even heard of the MIA website until Mr. Snyder's private investigators came to my office to inquire as to my relationship with the website. <laughs> I don't think that's true, but I don't really know about the MIA part. I'm not going to go into that. So this goes on and on. And if you want to read this for yourself, just go on over to Porn News Today and look at the most recent post. Randazza is a liar, as is Ari Bass. And from my perspective, though I am not an attorney, they committed perjury on the court with those filings. Now, will they ever get in trouble? Eh, they benefit from white privilege, though in many circles, a lot of people will question, hey, can you even define these two guys as technically even being white? Well, I say that they are. At least in America, they are. But it depends on what circles it is that you matriculate within, of course. But they do benefit from white privilege. And um, considering that I'm a black woman who supports the Republican Party and Donald Trump and an ex-sex worker, I don't expect too much to happen. But the point is that I know the truth. Many people who have known me over the years know the truth. And God knows the truth. And that's all that really matters when it comes down to it in the grand scheme of things. But I am going to look into my legal options when it comes to this because I do not appreciate being called crazy on a legal briefing by either man. Because I'm not. I'm very sane. As of September 26th, I will be one year completely sober of nicotine and alcohol. I live a good life. I have good friends. I have a good family. And I think I do pretty damn good work. So that's the end of this podcast for today. Sorry I got a little bit emotional, got a little bit loud too. But that's who Alexandra Mayers is. Take care, everyone. Um... I'm looking forward for the looking forward to the rest of my indefinite travels. And again, I will not be here tomorrow, but I will be here Wednesday and beyond. Once more, I'm Alex Mayers of PNT Live. Have a good night, everybody. Bye -bye.